Hey everyone, this is Gan from Devolutions with this week's Remote Desktop Manager Pro Tip. Now, did you know that Remote Desktop Manager offers an offline mode? This makes it really convenient in case you lose access to the internet or even your intranet so that you can still function and use most of Remote Desktop Manager's features. Now, obviously there's some things and limitations like you can't create attachments or uh, logs. You can't really do any user management with it as well, but it can be pretty handy if you need to access maybe a username and password, an IP address, or even a serial number for one of your products that's stored in Remote Desktop Manager. Now, don't worry we encrypt that file for you. If you have any questions about that, just visit our help file that gives you a lot more details about how we do the encryption, as well as the configuration and the settings that you need to make sure that offline mode is available for you. And it's not necessarily available on all the data sources, so you'll want to check that help file so that you can see whether it's available for the data source that you're using. Now, there's a few things that you have to set up before to make sure that offline mode is available. And I'm going to take a look at those things right now for you. So first thing is I'm going to go into my data source settings here and click the little pencil and go advanced. And I want to make sure that the caching mode is on right now. If it's on disabled, you won't be able to do any um, offline mode at all. So you want to make sure it's set to intelligent. That way it can do intelligent caching so you have access offline. Next, you want to make sure that the user himself has access to offline mode. So I'm going to go to administration. Now I'm using Devolution Server. So it opens up the web uh, browser here. And then in Maurice is my user. I'm going to click on edit and go to settings here and read and write is enabled for this user. So yes, he can uh, read and write. Next, you also wanna check the roles. So if I go into user groups, um, I wanna make sure that he also has access to read and write. So we offer fine grain granular control again. If you wanna set it up by groups or roles or users, uh, we give you that option as well. Just make sure that one isn't overwriting the other. Next, I wanna also check the data source settings because we enabled the caching earlier, but we wanna make sure that the offline mode has some parameters set up as well. So I'm gonna scroll down to the system settings here and go to offline. And here, yes, we have rewrite and we have a seven day cache. So it expires after seven days. You can even prompt to refresh the cache on vaults on startup or a prompt for credentials before going offline as well. And finally, each one of your vaults will actually have to be set up as well. So if I go to administrations, I go to vault settings here. Right now, I am in my Windjammer marketing vault here. And here, my security setting says allow offline. If I were to set this to no, then this vault would not be available offline for any of the users. So I want to make sure that every vault that I want to be made available offline is set to yes. I had kind of have everything set up and just to double check all my settings, I can actually go to file and go to my data source information here. And you can see here in the current vault, Windjammer Marketing, here's all the settings that are set up. So this is kind of a good summary of your offline mode options. So now I'm gonna go ahead and actually go offline. Now there's two different ways that this can happen. Sometimes you can actually go offline from your data source, but you could still be connected to your intranet. For example, here I can actually turn off, go offline, but if you notice here, I can actually still run sessions. Why? I'm connected locally to my intranet, but I don't have access to the data source itself. I can even add entries here. And I have access to my user vault, even though I am not connected to the data source whatsoever right now. Now, some vaults are not available. For example, if I go to Windjammer default, it said the selected vault is not available offline or has expired. That's because we didn't set that one up. So I can still have some functionalities, but obviously there's other things that don't work anymore. So let's say, uh, let's switch vaults here and let's put them back into Telemark and let's open up a couple of sessions here. So we got an SSH se session going on. We also have an RDP session that is open. So now you can see I've got a couple sessions here uh, and then all of a sudden let us pull the plug. We're gonna actually physically pull the cable out there. Let's see what happens in Remote Desktop Manager here. I just lost connection to the RDP. Oh, there's an unexpected error. And then all of a sudden it says unable to connect to the data source. So I'm going to say go offline. And then we got some errors here. It's trying to connect. So now we are in offline mode, as you can see by the little red icon there. So now we have, uh, we've lost internet. Now it says offline here in my data source, even without any internet whatsoever, I can still access my user vault. I can go in and add and edit sessions, but obviously 
I can't open anything. Why? Because I'm not connected to the server whatsoever. So you can see there's multiple reasons why offline mode could be helpful for you, whether you lose connection to your data source itself or you actually lose internet connectivity completely. As in my case, I showed you both examples. But offline mode can be really handy. You just have to make sure you set it up and make sure that all the parameters are set. Once again, if you have any questions, I encourage you to visit the help file. It's got a lot more details about what each function does. And if you like these kinds of videos, like and subscribe and also leave a comment below. Thanks for watching this pro tip. Have a great week.